I have such terrible social anxiety. A lot of authors are introverts. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole deal was that we get to like write in our underpants and mm -hmm. that's the deal. Like, we, I thought we agreed to this. Like, <laughs> Hi, it's Kara Price from Bellatrist. And it's Ebony Liddell from Epic Reads, and we're here with Mary H.K. Choi, the author of Permanent Record, which we are so excited to talk about. This beautiful package over here. It's true, everyone loves my package. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, Permanent Record follows Pablo. He's a recent NYU dropout who works at a bodega. One of the things that really stood out to me about this book is the discussion of intimacy in the digital age. Not only sort of how we are intimate with each other, but also like how close we feel to people that we don't know. So I was wondering sort of how it plays into your book. Yeah, I mean like I, I have that sort of dynamic in my first book, Emergency Contact, where two people fall in love over text. Mm. And Permanent Record too, it's like, it's a long distance situation and there are a lot of different modalities of intimacy that use technology. And I personally love it. Like, you know, it's so true that everyone has this like thing of like, catfishing, everything is just mm -hmm. a lie, like da 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 da. And like, sure. <laughs> But I actually feel like when I am unencumbered with like my meat suit mm. and like my social anxiety, that there can be this like intimacy that feels very truthful. Mm -hmm. And I love how like, especially like any sort of like, you know, neuroatypical people who might be too overwhelmed by different like social cues. Like I think that texting and things like that are such a boon. And actually some of my closest friends are pen pals. Mm -hmm. and. What that means is that we just have end-to-end -end encryption on WhatsApp and we leave these like very like logarithmic, like, oh, here are my innermost thoughts, <laughs> like voice memos yeah. to each other. Mm -hmm. And that feels really close. And I do think that there is this paradigm that people are like, you know, that's false intimacy or how can you really feel that way unless like you're seeing your own light refracted back in the light of the sheen of the, their eyes and all this <laughs> stuff. And like, sure, but I just don't find that to be necessarily honest and truthful to how we experience closeness now. Mm -hmm. So let's like sort of flip this a little bit. You know, there's sort of like this a rise in depression with like FOMO. Mm -hmm. And you have Lee who's, you love her on the page, but you also can sort of feel like her issues with social media and how she feels like she can't really be her true self and like do fans love her or the idea of her. So can you sort of talk about how you wrote her story into this? Yeah, so like we stay in Pablo's headspace and I really was very deliberate about that because mm -hmm. I thought there's so many dynamics of like masculinity that I wanted to tackle mm. too, just with the power dynamic that the, these two have and the power disparity specifically. But, you know, Leah is a real person as well. And like, she really does struggle with like the tidal flow. Like, you know, at one point, a picture of her in cornrows goes viral from when she was a child. And like that obviously would be a huge issue. Mm -hmm. And that ruins certain aspects of her album release. And mm. so there is, you know, as huge as she is, I did want to sort of illustrate how fallible she was also based on like the caprices of her fans. Mm -hmm. And like fan armies love to turn on people, mm -hmm. you know? And like there is no fan army member who is more ardent than someone who turns on you. Yeah. Cause they really feel like they do know you and they feel mm. explicitly disappointed by you. So one of my favorite quotes is, Intimacy, intimacy is the shit. Like I just absolutely <laughs> love that. I think it's very prevalent even just like in your own work. So for those of you who don't know, Mary has a podcast called Hey Cool Life. It's really nice it's and so good, dude. And just like so <laughs> no, calming. So yeah. You're really honest about your struggles and trials of just mm. sort of being a creative in the especially in the public eye. So how do you maintain intimacy as a public figure? Well, first of all, thank you so much for calling me a public figure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's really real. So I actually have two podcasts. One is Hey Cool Job, and it's about different careers. And then the flip side of that, you know, Hey Cool Life is like the, the cost of doing business and the mm. cost of doing creative work and how, like, humiliating it is to, like, create something like a multi-hundred page book that's so unsolicited. Mm. Like, you know, I do feel a lot of, like, embarrassment when... I look around at the world and I'm just like, but I made something up, you know, because the news is just so depressing and so hardcore. I struggle a lot. Like a lot of authors are introverts. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole 
deal was that we get to like write in our underpants and mm -hmm. that's the deal. Like we, I thought we agreed to this. Like, mm -hmm. And so anytime I'm like actually on the road and publicizing it and like looking at people who have read my work, it just, it's a lot. And like the way I deal with that, which is hugely privileged, is that I have a therapist mm -hmm. and I also go to like, group support meetings for my various addictions. Mm -hmm. And I go to those three times a week. So I'm in mm -hmm. therapy like dead ass, like four hours a week, mm -hmm. which is a huge luxury and not something that everyone has. But I have such terrible social anxiety. I am so like, you know, the types of addictions I have like creates this like scarcity mentality. Mm -hmm. Specifically, I have an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. And so there's not enough for me any anywhere. Mm -hmm. And there's, I don't feel safe 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, a lot of my work is just coming to terms with creating art in that context. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like artists are incredibly sensitive and like I think that our observational skills are a huge boon and the cost oftentimes is this anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I don't deal with it well, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, but I do deal with it. and. That's been really, really nice. It's been so wonderful and such a gift not to blot everything out with like using substances yeah. and like mm -hmm. getting into like weird head spaces where I get so self-obsessed. And yeah, I mean, actually to, to the point of the podcast, you figure out where you're yeah. at and you figure out what you're thinking and you're figuring out like how you feel about what you're thinking. And so that podcast kind of excavates some of that for me. Mm, most definitely. Yeah. I was going to say that. I'm like, you're you're like listening to you work things out mm -hmm. during the podcast. And it's so helpful for so many people to sort of kind of like have that realization and sort of do the same thing themselves. It's sort of, it's, it's kind of seeing it through you, which is so intimate and beautiful. Um, and it's again, that shame component. Like you can either feel a way and feel shameful about it and it becomes your secret and yeah. your secret becomes corrosive. Yeah. Or you can be like, hi, I have the coping skills of an eight year old, which is very true for me. And I feel in danger all the time. <laughs> like, and then other people are like, oh my God, me too. This yeah. is what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that there's a difference between that and being sort of didactic in the way that like other generations of self-help mm. have emerged. Where it's like, this is what you need to do to be, this is who you are, you know, this is what you have to do every morning. And this. And that too, it's like, it's like such an optimized thing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like right. so it's capitalistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And like the whole, the, the, the jig is that it's like, it's always prescriptive. Self-help right. is mm -hmm. always prescriptive. It's like, buy this thing, do this thing. Da, 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 da. Like you can purchase your way to feeling better. Mm -hmm. But like for me, the core conceit of addiction is taking something from the outside and trying to apply it to something that you're feeling inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's like kind of like evil the way capitalism creates this need or like identifies this need. I mean, it used to be about creating need being like, is your teeth white enough? Mm -hmm. And now it's just like, are you, so you're anxious? Well, like I'll diagnose you, you'll, you'll get this. And I think that that's just, it makes me really sad to think yeah. that someone is struggling and just buying these like little talismans that are just like junk. Yeah, and so, the wellness industrial complex. Yeah, yeah. It's so real. It's so <laughs> powerful. Yeah. And like, CBD is a scam, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming. That was very intimate. <laughs> and CBD is a scam. So if you haven't bought Permanent Record yet, I don't know what you're doing, um, go buy it. Make sure to like our videos, make sure to comment, tell us what you think. Make sure to follow us at Bellatrice, B-E-L-L-E-T-R-I-S-T. And Epic Reads. On the next episode, we're gonna talk more about Permanent Record uh, with Mary. Thanks. Yay.